Welcome back to Thinking of Pi. Today we'll be adding on to the circuit that we put together last week. We'll be adding a button to it so that we can control the LED without the use of the computer. Here's the diagram of what we'll be putting together, and here's the schematic. So let's head over to the breadboard and put it together. Today we'll be needing our button. It's important to take note of the button with the four pins on the bottom here. These two are connected and these two are connected. Those will become important when we put it in. We'll be needing two 10 kilo ohm resistors. The bands on the resistors identify their rating. And then we'll be needing three additional uh, jumper wires. So right here, I've already got the project that we did last week. We've got our 220 ohm resistor, our LED, and our two jumper wires. Everything is exactly as it was, haven't touched it since last week. So let's put this together. We're going to take our button and make sure it's in this orientation. And it's going to go just over the bridge right here. Snap it in. We're going to take one of our resistors. It's going to go to this leg here and over to an empty rail over here. We're going to take our other resistor and it's going to go to this leg here and an empty rail over here. Now I'm going to take this black wire and that's going to go to the negative lead on the LED right here and it's going to go to this leg on the resistor over here. I'm going to take this yellow wire and it's going to go directly to our three volt pin on the GPIO. That's right here. Oh, made a mistake. This one's actually going to go to this leg on the button. And this one's going to go to the resistor over here. Last, we're going to take this orange wire. It's going to go to this resistor here. And we're going to connect that right over here to GPIO 18. That's going to allow the GPIO pin, when we set it to input, it will actually read the input state of the button. So there it is. Let's head over to the computer, write some code, and see how it works. All right, here we are on the computer. I'm already logged into the Raspberry Pi through VNC. And I've already written some code, so let's go through this. We've got two different projects that we're going to be doing. The first one looks very similar to the last one that we did. We've got our LED and we've got our button. We're importing that just like we import the LED. We're going to define our variables. We've got the LED on pin 17 like last time. We've got our button on pin 18 that we just saw earlier. And we're just going to loop it saying if the button is pressed, turn the light on, print LED on. Otherwise, turn the LED off and print LED off. So let's see if this works. There we go. So you can see if the button is pressed, the light comes on. When the button is released, the light goes off but I think we should try to turn the light on when the button is pressed and then turn it off when the button is pressed again. That's why I've written the second one. Looks very similar. We just have a couple of these in here where we're waiting for a button press, turning the light on and off. And it should work because we're gonna wait for a button press, turn it on, 
wait for another button press, turn it off, repeat. So let's give it a try. We seem to be having some problems. The light won't stay on and sometimes the light won't stay off. It's actually due to some mechanical vibrations in that little button that's causing some noise on the circuit. So we need to do something called debouncing. There are several different ways to debounce the circuit, but I'm just going to keep things simple because simple is good. That's why we're using, that's why we're using this uh, sleep function right here. And I'm just going to tell the code here to sleep in between those button presses to give it a little bit of time for that mechanical vibration to settle down. Let's give it a try. And there it is. It works exactly the way it was intended to. So this gives the LED a little bit more of a practical application. Next time we'll be looking at an LED bar graph and building off the same principles that we've been talking about through the last couple of videos. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos like this. We're going to be doing a lot more projects. I've got a lot of things planned. But that's all I've got for today. I'll talk to you guys next week.